Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I was actually supposed to uh, make this video, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, last week. Um, I, I had a short conversation with a few brothers on Facebook in reference to a um, a two day short lecture um, that I attended at the local big masjid uh, where I live. And uh, I do apologize for not getting to it until now. Been a little busy. Anyway, um, last week, I believe it was, I attended um, a lecture that was two days. It was um, Friday and Saturday by a brother named Hasib Noor, H-I-S-I-B, Hasib or Hasib Noor, N-O-O-R. And he is a graduate from the University of Medina. Um, and he also has uh, some secular education, um, you know, secular credentials as well. The uh, lecture series was in reference to the colonization of uh, the Muslims and the last decade or the last uh, 100 years. So he covered, you know, he went all the way back to the Ottoman, Ottoman Empire, what happened with them, who they were. And uh, he basically gave us a global tour of um, how some Muslim countries were established. Um, I mean, obviously he hit uh the mamlaka he hit you know uh he talked about muhammad ibn abdul wahhab uh you know he spoke about the saud family you know he talked about the british um you know the part that the brits play in the colonization of these muslim countries um how they were aided by uh some muslims uh to make a long story short we did the the global tour we did the global parade we hit pakistan we hit saudi we hit uh he said that he was not going to touch on um malaysia and some of the countries in southeast asia why i don't know but he chose not to um he hit nigeria and talked about some of the uh issues um again we're talking a hundred year time span he covered that was the 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 crux of uh of the lecture the hundred years and you know again he talked about the colonization um how these countries were basically manipulated or how they were created and formed um who played what part in it and uh it was very academically laid out uh, it was very thorough. It was uh, a lot of good information that um, maybe, you know, some people wouldn't wouldn't have or may not have access to or may not have the time to go research. So in that aspect, it was it was nice. At the end of the lecture, day one. There was a Q&A session and I asked this question. Actually, I was the last one to be allowed to ask a question. And my question was, OK, we took the normal global tour. You know, when we look at these kinds of issues, you know, we look at the major Muslim countries when we talk about these types of topics. Of course, we're going to hit Saudi. Of course, we're going to hit Pakistan. We're going to hit, you know, um, maybe Afghanistan and, you know, some of the other, you know, primarily Muslim countries. My question to him was, what about the indigenous Muslims in America? It's, it's great that we do the global tour. And we know everyone else's history. 
we know what happened to them and who did it and how come and who, what, when, where, and why. Um, but what about us? How are your feet in America and you talk about colonization, but you do nothing on the indigenous Muslims here in America? And then I said to him, in specific, the African-American Muslim community. I said, I would argue that the African-American uh, group as a demographic makes up a large chunk of what would be considered the indigenous population of Muslims here in America. Our colonization obviously began from the time that we got here, but can you speak on how we were colonized by immigrant, by immigrants? I'm not going to specify any group. How we were colonized mentally, financially, uh, Islamically. Um, can you please, you know, speak on that a little bit? Could you expound on that? And the room got quiet. And everyone just sort of looked around and he looked at me and he said, that's not my specialty. I don't have uh, much information on that. In my mind, I'm thinking. Once again, we are left out. I mean, African-Americans making up a large chunk of of the indigenous population of Muslims in America. And we absolutely have a history here. We have a history, uh, you know, f from the time we're talking about from the time we got here, we have a history, you know, we're talking about colonization because that was the topic. And he talked about uh, some pre-Islamic times uh, in some of these, in some of these other countries and how Islam came to them. And, and then he talked about the corruption within the governments and, you know, so it wasn't just, a narrow focus. You know, he talked uh, uh, about a wide range. Uh, 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 you know, he spoke about these countries in a more holistic uh, perspective. So how do you leave out the country where your feet are standing? I don't, I, well, I'll give the benefit of the doubt. Husnuldan. But once again, we are left out of the equation. We are left out of the story as if we haven't contributed, as if we don't have a history, as if we don't have uh, an Islamic footprint. Now, I will say this. Because we have had identity issues uh, within ourselves because of our history, our unique history and what has happened to us, you know, we tend to cling to and take on the persona of whatever group we attach ourselves to. If we attach ourselves to, say, any group out of the subcontinent, you know, uh, the Jamata Tablik or anybody else, then we tend to eat their food, dress their way, speech patterns become theirs. You know, uh, we speak like they do. We, you know, almost become them. If you are a follower of the, uh, you know, Middle East, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, anywhere in the Khalij, then you dress a certain way. Certain scholars that you take from certain, you know, foods you may begin to eat. Because we have a lack of identity ourselves. These other immigrants are coming from their country. They're bringing their culture, their cultural norms, their food, their um, communal norms. They're bringing all that. But we as African-Americans, uh, having been stripped of a lot of that, when we uh, become Muslim, we then attach ourselves to whatever group or area that we attach ourselves to. And then we become them instead of becoming us or remaining us or developing our own um, Islamic identity. Um, you know, obviously that is within the parameters and guidelines of uh, the Quran and the Sunnah. 
But I was, you know, a little bit saddened that we did an entire two day lecture and never once mentioned the indigenous Muslims uh, here in America. You know, we we never talked about the colonization, the uh, the African American history, you know. At some point, we need to take the reins of this and tell our own story, because if we don't tell our own story, either our story is going to be narrated to us, probably with many inaccuracies, or we're going to fall through the cracks and our contributions, our history, what we've done will never be told and we'll just be the redheaded stepchild will be those who cling to everyone else uh, for an Islamic identity, for an identity in general. So I just thought it was interesting. Uh, after the lecture, I was approached by uh, several people who, I guess, you know, were immigrants. Some said they were from Pakistan and um, some from the leadership of the masjid and they asked me they said well if you know of anyone who can speak on the topic that you brought up let us know and we will uh take care of them we'll fly them in we'll you know all of the amenities and all of the we'll take care of them because your question is a very important question so i was pleased to see that the question was not brushed under the rug and I was told you know, or not told, you know, to be quiet. The question by the people seemed to be embraced. Um, so I was pleasantly surprised with that. So um, any questions um, you may have or comments or what you think, if you agree or disagree, please put it in the comments below. Also, please subscribe. Pass this video on. Look at some of the brothers' lectures. Hasib Noor. Now, I will say this. I taped um, the entire session. And then at the end, he asked for it not to ever be shared. He said, don't even share it with your family members. He said, don't give it to anybody. He said it in general. But I sat in the front row with my camera trained on him. And, and you know, I have it. And unfortunately, you know, I have to um, honor what the brother said in uh, in not sharing it. It is what it is. But. Uh, hopefully. You know, that question sparked something in his brain that he'll that he'll come next time or go to another location equipped with the information of the indigenous Muslim experience with Islam, with indoctrination, with colonization, how to decolonize. First, you have to recognize the colonization and you have to recognize the group in order to decolonize. But I digress and I'll leave that for uh, another discussion. So with that, I will close. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe and pass this video on. Um, I would like to hear people's feedback in, you know, do you think the question is a valid question? You know, I really, and I have it on tape. I really wish you could see his response the expression when I asked that question, that was definitely not a question that he was expecting. And I'm not saying that, you know, he had an agenda or some type of, you know, uh, ulterior motive, but I'm saying it's just another example of how we are overlooked and how we are not important enough to do research on, to come equipped to speak on our experience in America as Muslims. You know, we have a rich history here with Islam in this country. We've established Masajid. You know, we have a long history here. 
I think the brother, Zaid Ansari, which many of us may know, uh, one of our one of our old heads. Um, I believe he's done some research uh, in this field. You know, so if he comes across this video, you know, I would love for him to drop some drop some gems on us uh, in reference to this topic. Um, but I do have my my nose to the grindstone uh, looking for uh, some qualified people, um, preferably academics who can come and uh, shed some light on this important topic. And I do have a couple people in mind. One of them I already contacted, but the brother, uh, the brother's on, uh, he was out of the country for a while and, uh, he's otherwise locked down until December. So, um, but I'll see, I'll see what I can do. I'll try to contact if any of you have any ideas of who would be a good speaker, uh, for this topic, please let me know. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.